Welcome everybody to this NIME webinar. Today we are going to talk about a scalable churn prediction model using the NIME Cloud Analytics platform. We are very lucky to have with us Jonathan Fuller. Uh, Jonathan has a PhD in bioinformatics from the University of Leeds and he has been working as a research scientist since 2010 until now. And the last year and a half, we have been so lucky to have him on our NIME team. John has been working on the project of the NIME analytics of the NIME Cloud Analytics Platform since the beginning, and he's here now to share it with us. Uh, I would like to inform you that the questions will be uh, asked at the end, so you can write them in the chat box uh, on the side. I will filter them, and then at the end, I'm going to pass them to John. John, please, the word is to you now. Thank you very much for the introduction, Rosaria. Um, so welcome, everyone to the webinar on advanced analytics, building a scale, scalable churn prediction model in NIME Cloud Analytics pro platform. Um, so my name is John Fuller, as Rosaria just said, and I'm just going to spend a little bit of time introducing you to NIME. And by NIME, I mean uh, the company. So NIME.com uh, was founded in 2008. We have offices in Zurich, where, uh, where we're headquartered, and I'm speaking from now. And we've opened offices in Constance and Berlin, and also in San Francisco. NIME is the maintainer of the open source NIME analytics platform, which is a comprehensive data loading, processing, analysis, and modeling platform. This has a, uh, the analytics platform has a visual front end, and it's open. So that means open to all sorts of data, all sorts of tools, and various different user personas. And it's also open source. NIME produces also commercial extensions that will help work, uh, working more collaboratively, um, working productively, and also for high performance. So let me just introduce you to um, statistical data analysis and data science, and the topic of advanced analytics. So we have kind of this idea of descriptive behavior of what is happening. So you might ask the question, how many customers did we lose last quarter? Maybe more in interesting and more important, but a little bit harder is diagnostic. So why did that happen? Why did we lose so many customers? A step more difficult would be predictive. So what is going to happen? How many customers will we lose next quarter? So that hasn't happened yet, but we can start to ask the question, um, what will happen? And finally, the idea of prescriptive analytics. So in that case, what do we need to make it happen? So. Most interestingly, in this case, how can we not lose so many customers? So the first kind of two di descriptive and diagnostic analytics there would be really known as kind of analytics or business intelligence. For advanced analytics or data scientists, data science, that really means kind of the predictive and prescriptive. So what is going to happen and what do we need to do to make it happen? So one way that um, you can do that is you can use the NIME analytics platform. So that's the open source tool that we previously uh, described a little bit. But here, um, I've just shown a screenshot of the analytics platform and uh, a workflow. And I'll go on for those of you who are new to the NIME analytics platform to describe a little bit more about what a workflow is in a little bit. And also, you can start to think about visualizing your, your results when you've you've started building your analytical models. So the way we approach building an analytics workflow in, in the NIME analytics platform is using nodes that perform specific tasks on data. 
So nodes have inputs, they have outputs, they have status. So in this example of the partitioning node, the node could be not configured. Once I've configured the node, it would be idle. It's waiting for some data. When I execute the node on success, the traffic light here will turn green. And if there's a problem with the node, then we'll get an error message. We can combine these nodes together to create workflows. In this case, we uh, have the case of reading some data, splitting that into 60% into the top um, along here, and 40% along the bottom. And we then use a couple of a tool called the random forest to, to make some kind of prediction. So there are over 1,000 native and embedded NIME uh, nodes available in NIME for all sorts of tasks from data access, accessing data in big data platforms, transformation of data, analysis and data mining, visualization, and finally deployment. I also mentioned earlier the fact that we have um, additional commercial extensions to the NIME analytics platform. And these are designed to help you collaborate. So that's tools like the NIME server or the NIME cloud server uh, and NIME team space. Then you have um, productivity tools such as the NIME personal productivity or partner productivity extensions and performance tools such as the NIME big data connectors, NIME Spark executors or the NIME cluster executor. And another really important part of the NIME analytics platform is our community and partner extensions which mean that we get to access a whole bunch of domain knowledge from those community and part, uh, that those in the community and our partners that really makes NIME incredible or the NIME ecosystem incredibly powerful. So just a little bit about why we might think about using the NIME cloud analytics platform. Um, and I think these three points sum that up pretty, pretty clearly. So one of them is you want to get started quickly to analyze your data. Um, once you've actually got started to analyze your data, you may want to bring your analytics to your cloud-hosted data. So the NIME Cloud Analytics platform is much smaller than your big data might be, um, and then that will be hosted in the cloud. So why not bring your analytics to your cloud data and you don't have to move tons and tons of data around? And finally, you can use the, the cloud to scale your analytics workflow. In this case on Azure, up to 32 cores, 448 gigabytes of RAM, which is much, much more than you'll be able to, to do on your standard laptop. So today I'm going to focus on two, two things. So first of all, the, the benefits of using the NIME Cloud Analytics platform. And secondly, on the case, uh, the analyti advanced analytics use case of churn prediction. And I'm going to start by showing you the solution that we, we're going to build today. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the data from Excel. I'm going to read the data from a database. I'm going to read some data from legacy tools. And I'm going to join all of those customer records together. So that's really the, the prerequisite for being able to build our workflow. I'm then going to build the, the churn prediction model. And finally, I'm going to deploy that. So let's move on a little bit. Now, the scalable solution to this is to basically use our workflow that we build, um, but to do that in the NIME Cloud Analytics platform. And as I mentioned earlier, then we have the option to, to build that on whatever size instance is available to us in the cloud. So we can use much more compute power to, to build those models and to be able to work much faster. So an introduction to the problem here. Um, so churn prediction what we want to do is we want to use customer information to predict which of the customers that we have will remain a customer and which of those will not. And those who will not remain a customer would be the customers who are churning. So up here, I've shown you know, my happy customers, um, the top customers happy in month one, and the bottom uh, customer is happy in month one as well. Now, moving on to the second month, we find that the first customer is still happy and the second customer is no longer happy. In the third month, we expect that 
the top customer is still going to be happy, whereas the th uh, bottom customer is likely to leave and maybe even worse to a competitor. So given this big group of customers, can we predict those of who are likely to churn and those who are not likely to churn? So what are the benefits of being able to do that? Well, the first one is if we can identify these customers who are likely to churn, then we can actively choose whether to try to retain the customer or not. The next step is potentially to predict which intervention is most likely to have an effect. So if we want to retain that customer, um, do we need to improve uh, to provide better customer support? Maybe we need to send them a, a coupon for a discount. And if we do send them a, some kind of discount or special offer, should we do that via the web, via mobile, or via traditional post? And the kind of the, the main benefits there for your business is then hopefully a better brand and better revenue. So how can we do this practically? So the first thing we're going to need to do is to gather customer data. And we might want to pull that in from tools like Excel. Um, we may want to pull that in from like tools that we're, we have a lot of data in, but we, we don't plan to use going forward. We may want to access that from databases such as MS SQL, Postgres, Oracle. We may want to pull that in from big data platforms like Hadoop. Once we've gathered that customer data and joined that together, then we're going to build our predictive model. And finally, we want to deploy that on the NIME server um, or with the NIME big data extensions or with a third party tool. So what we just described there, we can model as a workflow. And I've done that just here. We have our data reading steps, our data loading steps. We have our customer records, our predictive model, and the deployment. And the deployment is our main business goal. But these steps on the left-hand side are really the things that are going to take us the most time to do, whereas the step on the right-hand side is really the, the, the main business goal and the, the thing that provides us the most value. So we want to make the steps on the left as easy as possible and as quick as possible so that we can get as much benefit as possible. So that looks familiar. I showed you in the previous steps a workflow and modeled in the NIME Analytics platform. And we see here that basically our ideas that we described and the implementation actually look identical. And this has a real benefit if you want to describe that then to your colleagues because you can show them the actual implementation that you've built, and hopefully they can understand quite easily what you're then doing. Of course, within each of these meta nodes that I've shown here, these gray boxes, there's some more complexity that we may need to look into in more detail, um, but we can choose when we do that. So on the Nime Cloud Analytics platform, how do we actually practically launch an instance? So we can find the instance on the Microsoft Azure store. You can follow either of these two links on the bottom. And when we go to that page, you'll see some description about what's on offer. And in this case, we're going to choose to create a virtual machine. At this stage, um, you will need to have your Azure account login details. And once you're, you're logged in, you'll see a page something like this. We again describe what's available and you can choose Create. Here, you're going to then configure the basic settings for your Cloud Analytics platform, the name of the virtual machine that will be created, the username, a password, and a resource group, and also where you launch that um, instance. So you can be sure that your, your data is stored in the location where you, you need it to be. So I can then choose OK. And this is the really cool part. So here I'm choosing my virtual machine side. So for example, um, here I have a nice small virtual machine, this DS2 standard, with just two cores, seven gigabytes, and a local SSD. I may want something a bit bigger. Um, here, eight cores, 28 gigabytes. 
Um, that's really you know plenty for kind of fairly fairly large workflows. And if I want something really, really powerful, then I've got this 32 core machine here with 448 gigabytes. And if I go to view all, then I have even more options. Of course, you have to think a little bit about how you um, how the cost is looking here. So I can see that I can try something um, fairly cheap here and see what things are looking like. And here I have something that's obviously much more expensive, but more much more powerful. But of course, with these VMs, I can just choose to fire them up and shut them down when I'm finished with them. So I'm going to then choose Select. And a few more settings to where the, de the defaults will usually work for a first, um, first demo. And you'll get then some summary of the, the setup you've got, and you can then buy the virtual machine instance. We've put together a. Um, product page and um, some quick start guides that show you how to launch that instance and also how to um, uh, connect to that instance once you've launched it. So I'm actually going to show you now in the demo how to connect to the instance. And so if you just bear with me one minute. So in this case, from the Azure portal, you can um, click Connect, the Connect button, and that will download a Microsoft RDP file, which will work in your remote desktop um, machine. Here I'm going to show you one extra little tr trick that will allow you to link your local data source with the, um, with the Nine Cloud Analytics platform. So here, if I right click and choose Edit, um, most of these fields are pre-populated from the downloaded RDP file. But if I go to Local Resources and More, I have the option to see which drives are on my machine and which ones I might want to share with my Cloud Analytics platform. And I'm going to choose the T drive, my temporary drive, where I have some files that I'm interested in. I can choose OK. And when I'm ready, I can click Connect. I choose Connect. And I want to use my account that I created in the, the previous steps when I launched my VM. So here, I launch my machine. And I click through and connect to the session. Now, when you first log into a new cloud instance, you will see the, the get started example. And I can just double click here. And I see my standard example workflow. If I want to execute everything on that just to test everything's working, I can choose here, execute all executable nodes. And we'll see that my nodes change from yellow to green, and the workflow has been executed. We've also packaged the, the Nime public example server into the Cloud Analytics platform. So there's a whole bunch of workflows that allow you to look at different aspects. So for example, if you're interested in particularly in analytics and you want to know how to do um, some good statistics, then there are some workflows that show you how to, how to do that. And they're all in place and available for you. Now, here today, um, we want to actually get some data into our analytics platform. So let's just, for a minute, go back to our local desktop. And I see here that I have an Excel file with my some of my customer data for my churn prediction. So it has things like the area code where the customer lives, the age, gender, and their customer ID. And that's currently resi residing on my local machine. And I want to get that into my Cloud Analytics platform to, to get started building my model. So that's quite easy. What I can do is I can go back to my Cloud Analytics platform machine with the remote desktop. And here we'll see that the T drive is shared. Um, and I can look for my, my files. And my customer number Excel file is available. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into my local workspace. And that's now available there for me. Now, in my churn workflow group, I'm going to right click and create a new Nime workflow. 
and I'm going to call this churn prediction. And I can choose finish. And now we see we have a blank workspace where I can get started to build my churn prediction workflow. So first of all, I'm going to pull in this Excel file, just drag and drop. I'm going to double click on that and choose to configure. And you'll see here that I have a preview of the data and how that looks. Looks pretty good, but the one thing I want to do is I want to make this row into the column headers. And there I just need to say that the table contains the column headers in the first row. So I can check that button, hit refresh, and now everything has the right column headers and the right data types. So I can choose OK. And I can press Execute. And if I right click there, I can look at the output table and see that my data has been read in. Now here, that's only the data for um, the, the customer themselves. And we might have, or in this example, we have data in a database that tells us something about the, the customer's use of our, our service. So I'm actually hosting that on the NIME cloud server. And I'm going to right click here and choose login. I give my password, choose OK. And within here, I've actually already created a meta node called read from database. And I'm just going to drag and drop that into the workspace. If I want to get a bit more idea what's going on there, I can double click, look inside. And we'll see that I've got a, a database connector, some table selector, and some connection table reader. And I could go in and look and see how that's configured. And in this case, I'm going to go back and just execute that again and right click and have a look at that data. So here, it's things like the data plan. Um, it's from a telecoms use case, the, the size of the bill, the number of minutes and calls used, the kind of phone that the customer has, and this is all referenced by the customer ID. So the obvious thing I might want to do is I might want to, to join that together using a joiner. Um, but in this case, I've already got um, a couple of joiners prepared. So I can, again, drag that in. And if I look inside, I just have some joiners trained, chained together that are going to join by the customer ID. So now I can hook up my joiners. And I need also my third bit of data. So that's the data from the legacy systems. So in this case, we've just written that out from a CSV file, but that could be other file formats as well. So I can, again, connect that up. Let's have a look at what that data looks like. I'm going to execute that. Look here and see that this is basically some system that's keeping track of whether we sent promotions to customers in the past, whether they churned or not, so yes or no, and again, their customer ID. So at this point, I can now join all of my data together. I right click and execute. And here I can look at the results. So now I have all of my rows of data and they're all joined into one big table that I can now use for my um, analytics. So um, fairly typical in any advanced analytics application will be to create a, a test set and a training set. So here I'm going to use the partitioning node to do that. I double click. Here my partitioning node is added. I can again double, double click to configure. I'm going to choose the relative percentage here as being 50%. And in this case, I'm going to do some stratified sampling. So I keep the ratio of yes and no's from my churn column the same in both of my data sets. So here, when I execute this, we had 50 or 10,000 rows on of data coming in. And now if I mouse over, I have 5,000 rows on the top and 5,000 rows on the bottom. So there is my 
my training set to build the model, and my test set to evaluate how good my churn prediction model is. So at this stage, I'm going to choose the decision tree learner. And um, as a quite nice way to, to get started with our modeling, let's again double click to configure. I'm going to look at the churn column. Um, we automatically select the, the rightmost column. If you don't want to predict churn but something else, then you have the option to change that. But we select churn. I'm going to keep the defaults here. And I'm going to choose um, binary nominal splits in this case. At this point, I can right click and execute that. And one of the nice things about the decision tree learner is that I can look at the decision tree view. And this is quite nice because we can see um, which particular categories are being used to, to make our decisions and make our splits. So we can kind of drill down and see whether, in this case, this is the number of uh, dropped calls. Um, so of course, if you're a customer who's getting lots of dropped calls on your mobile phone, then probably you're going to be th pretty annoyed, and you might want to think about another provider. Um, here, there's a number of service calls taken. And again, um, if, if you're calling customer support, then you probably have a problem. And if that customer support's not um, solving that problem, then again, you may be, may be annoyed and you may want to leave your contract. So then that's the nice thing about the decision tree view in this case is it allows us to, to kind of rationally go through and see why, why the decision was made and to see whether that fits with our hypothesis. I'm now going to drag in a decision tree predictor. And this predictor node needs, first of all, the data to to evaluate how well we do. And it also needs a model. And you'll see here that these blue ports are um, looking like they need to be connected together. So we connect them because they are both PMML models. And here with the decision tree predictor, I'm just going to choose as well to append these um, normalized class distribution. I'm going to use that later to generate a rock curve. Here I can right click and again execute that. And let's look at the data at this point. So at this point, our data is the same as we had on the, that we gave as an input, the 5,000 rows. But now we have an additional column. So we have our three columns. So we have the probability column that the churn is no, the probability column that the churn is yes, and our prediction column. So in this case, we predict that the churn is no, and in reality, the churn is also no. I'm going to close that because we can't learn too much just by kind of eyeballing the data there. Let's first of all look at the scorer node. In this case, with the scorer, I can double click, and I want to see how well we did at predicting the churn column. So I select the churn column as the first column and the second column to be the prediction of churn. You can say OK. And here, I'm going to execute an open views. And now I see the confusion matrix. So the, the real known values of um, whether the customer churned or not, and the predicted values, and a couple of useful statistics like the, the accuracy of our predictions. Then we're going to. Um, also look at the rock curve and pull that in. And with the rock curve, I'm choosing the class column to be the churn, my positive class value to be yes. And now I need to find my probability of churn being yes column and add that here. I can choose OK. I can right click and execute and open views. And I get then some estimation of, of how good my model is. So at this stage, we've really um, trained now a model, and we've estimated whether that's useful for us. One of the great things about building this on the, the cloud analytics platform is that we have more computational power available to us. So 
if I wanted to do the same thing, but use a random forest learner, for example, I can take my data, I can copy that, paste, hook up that new, the same data source again, and just replace my decision tree with a random forest learner and a random forest predictor. And I need to make a couple of small configuration changes, but otherwise I'm ready to go. And I can, um, after making those changes, then I can again execute my um, uh, model and I don't have to worry about whether that's going to take longer to execute or not because I have really the power to do that much faster. And so here again, I can evaluate how well my model did and it looks in this case like I did a little bit better. So um, that brings us to the point where we now have a couple of models that we may want to, to think about deploying. And one of the things we want to do there is we want to actually export a model. In this case, I'm going to use the PMML writer. And the really great thing about PMML is it's a, uh, a nice XML step-based standard that can represent the model that we've built here. So I'm going to select that. And in this case, I'm going to decide that I want that data available on my local machine. And so in this case, I need to browse again to my um, my shared drive, this T drive, and to my demo files. And I'm going to call my file um, churn model.pmml. And I can save that and choose OK. And when I execute that, then my my model is saved to my local disk. So let's just go and check that that's really been written back to my local disk. I'm going to minimize my remote desktop. And yeah, that's now available to us locally. And we can maybe go back and learn a bit more about what we can do with that. So we have the option to deploy that model with the NIME server or also on Hadoop or to use a third party predictive modeling markup language um, predictor. So in this case, um, I've shown how you might do that with a workflow on the NIME server using the, the JSON input and the JSON output nodes. And in this case, I've shown how you would do that using the NIME big data extensions on Hadoop. And in this case, we can connect to Hive um, convert our Hive query to Spark to pull in our data. I can pull in the model from PMML, use the Spark PMML model predictor to predict on the entire data set that we've, we have available to us in Hive. And then finally, using the Hive and Spark connectors here to write the results back to a database to Hive. So that's pretty cool because you can kind of then deploy your model that you've trained on the Cloud Analytics platform and um, you apply that to billions of rows on your Hadoop instance. So in summary, so the NIME Cloud Analytics platform is available now on the Microsoft Azure marketplace, and it allows you to choose the processing power that you need. And it allows you to build powerful advanced analytics workflows. With NIME.com tools, you can also um, address your issues with collaborate, collaboration, productivity, and performance. So for example, with the NIME server for easy collaboration and deployment of advanced analytics, or with the big data extensions for advanced analytics using Hive and Spark on Hadoop. So with the NIME Cloud Analytics platform, you can try that now. You can find it on the mark as your marketplace, and the link is shown in link number one. You can download the standard NIME analytics platform from NIME.com if you don't have an access to access to Azure. I would really recommend checking out the NIME Learning Hub, where you can learn a bit more about how to 
use NIME in the most powerful way. And if you want to connect to Azure, um, then there's two quick start guides to launch a new Cloud Analytics Platform instance and also to connect to that instance once it's available. If you have any questions, you're free to contact us at nime.com. And um, I look forward to answering some of your questions just now. Thanks, John. That was a great presentation. I have really only one question that might be of interest to everybody. So somebody asked, uh, is there a way to control uh, of controlling the cloud costs? Yeah. So one of the, the great things there is that um, with Azure, you have all of their standard tools for, for managing VMs and, and um, kind of monitoring what's going on. But also, you as the end user have a way to, to monitor those costs. So whereas um, if you're using the analytics platform locally, then you might find that or you'll find that you'll probably launch that and leave that open all the time, even if you're use it, whether you're using it or not. With the Cloud Analytics platform, what you can do is you can you have several kind of options. So you could develop your workflow locally on some some small bits of data to to get your proof of concept up and running. And if you need then some kind of really big machine to do the compute power for for a couple of hours, you can just launch that machine for a couple of hours. When you're finished, you can shut the machine down, and it doesn't cost you anything more than the small amount for the storage. The other option, of course, I, um, what I did here is I used the NIME server to allow the sharing between the, the two different platforms. And that can be a great way to allow you to, um, to move your data across between the, the analytics platform locally and the analytics platform in the cloud. And again, that means you, you don't have to worry about um, necessarily persisting your data in that particular um, instance. So there's many options to kind of um, to, to leverage the, the the full power of the cloud and but also to to stay within budget. I have a few more questions. They just arrived. Um, so one is, uh, uh, any plans of making the NIME Cloud Analytics platform available on the Amazon Cloud as well? Yep. So certainly that's something that we will be addressing um, as soon as soon as possible. Um, the um, yeah, then you'll have the option to to choose which whichever platform you're familiar with and you have available to you in your company. Another question is about, uh, can, can you use big data extensions to launch Spark jobs from the cloud platform? Yes, yeah, so that's um, really um, basically possible. In that case, you would, however, need to, to make sure you have the licenses um, installed there. So it's something that, um, that you can, for example, get a demo license to, to get started and try stuff. Um, it will depend on what kind of, um, of cloud platform you're connecting to, and we're looking at um, making sure that we we properly support um, all of the, the standard cloud vendors' big data offerings there. A question about the pricing model. So the pricing model in the cloud, we charge charge a flat fee um, to to cover management costs. And then the, the 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 main cost really there is the hardware that you run the um, the analytics platform on. Um, so you can find the the pricing information on the on the Azure pricing pricing list. Okay, um, I think there are no more questions. Uh, any more questions? Um, okay, so I think we can conclude this uh, webinar. Thank you, John. That was a great presentation. I already said that. And thank everybody for attending the webinar. And I hope to see you again to the next webinar 
uh, in July, 19th of July, about the next version of NIME Analytics Platform 3.2. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Goodbye.